Pass between Jamaica's history-making reggae girls and the Jamaica Football Federation JFF remains unresolved. With the World Cup stars omitted from upcoming CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifying games, all members of the 2023 World Cup squad withheld their services for the October FIFA window, saying they hadn't received full and correct payments for their historic round of 16 performance in Australia and New Zealand. They also cited constant mistreatment from the JFF as a reason for withholding their services. However, with money spade, fans were expecting to see the likes of Khadija Bonnie Shaw, the Swaby Sisters, Drew Spence, and Rebecca Spencer for the November 29 game against Panama in Kingston and the December 3 encounter away to Guatemala. That will not be the case. It is understood that attempts to convene a meeting to address the alleged mistreatment have not materialized. The JFF has since proposed a December 8 meeting to which they are awaiting confirmation from the representatives of the reggae girls. While the 23-member squad named by interim coach Xavier Gilbert on Wednesday includes Chenelu Asha, Sashana Campbell, Marlo Swetman, Lauren Reed, Malike Days, Zoe Vider, Israela Groves, Rickshaw Walker, Davier Richards, Michaela Days, Shanil Buckley, Melissa Johnson, Aliyah Morgan, Tiana Burnett, Serena Mensa, Shanice Foster, Destiny Powell, Najeri Butts, Shania Harris, Sydney Street, Javane Jones, Lashante Paul, Malia Atkins. So, Ricardo, I turn to you now with the situation at hand and, of course, with the correspondence that we've received. Where are we? What's happening? To be honest, Mariah, I'm not completely sure. I am at a loss for what is really going on here. I would have expected that once the monies were paid over, there would be a speedy resolution to this impasse between the history-making reggae girls who did brilliantly at the World Cup and the Jamaica Football Federation. The fact that we are here a week away from the next game against Panama and those girls will not be involved and the issues have still not been resolved is extremely disappointing to me. No. Let's look at the information as we have it, Mariah. Apparently, there was to be a meeting between the girls and the Jamaica Football Federation. That meeting was to iron out um, the issues. That meeting apparently did not take place. Um, Why? So that in itself, well, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear. There's no reason given as to why it didn't happen. Yeah, that in itself is, is as I said, extremely disappointing and especially at this stage now we have heard a lot mariah from the jamaica football federation this is not the first time i am going to say this on this show but i'll repeat it today because i think it is important throughout this entire process we have seen essentially two letters coming from the reggae girls one before the world cup and one just before they pulled out of the squad for the october fifa window what we have not seen from the reggae girls is a representative or representatives stepping up and speaking to anyone in the media um, and not that they necessarily have to mariah but I think at this stage, with everything that has gone on, and especially now, because the matter is still unresolved, um, I think it would be the right thing to come forward and let the public know what is really happening 
in this situation because where we are right now is extremely disappointing and in many ways for me it is a slap in the face of the genuine fans who want to see the best reggae girls team in action who um, want to see the team qualify for the gold cup next year and do well um, as as best as they can because guess what what we did learn from the matches in October against Guatemala and Panama is that the depth of Jamaica's women's football is better than many people thought based on the results against Panama and Guatemala. Um, a 2-1 loss to Panama in a really tight game, a 2 all draw with Guatemala again, another tight game. Both games could have gone either way. Not many people expected the reggae girls um, uh, as, as far as I am concerned, the third string team to be as competitive as they were, but they were competitive. Yeah, for what? what is still truth, though, Mariah, is that the best reggae girls team is a combination of the girls that played in the October window and the girls who competed at the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. And the fact that we do not have that cannot be the best thing for women's football in this country. Yeah, and I think about what's at stake. Yeah. Gold Cup qualification, uh, reputation, of, reputation of women's football. What these Jamaican women have fought to finally reach a certain level of professional football because we've heard for quite some time that, of course, there was no football, then the Citadel Mali team coming in and, you know, um, resurrecting the football in Jamaica and I feel as if you know things are going backwards now with this entire situation and I I am actually very disappointed Ricardo that one there is no reason given as to why and if it's because of lack of communication that the meeting did not happen then I wonder how important is football and national football to all of the parties involved? Because if there was supposed to be a meeting, as we were informed, then why did the meeting not happen? Is it that the representatives were not available? Is it that the ladies were not available? So for me, again, and we sit here always sometimes when we're discussing issues like this with more questions than answers. I also feel sorry for Coach, I have to say. We had him on set, Xavier Gilbert. Yeah. He has not been yeah. afforded a full squad of team, uh, a full squad yeah. to pick players, to represent and to show what he can do as a coach. As a matter of fact, Coach is ju just using what he can, trying to put the pieces together and, of course, keep Jamaica's football-loving fans pleased to a certain point because we know, of course, the, when the fans get angry, Ricardo, they go for the coach. It, it's just, that's just what happened. It, it's I, I don't think they will in this instant, though. Yeah, but coach has been really trying to survive with what he has had at his disposal, and yeah. I think it's so unfair for him as well. Yeah, and you pointed to the conversation that we had with Xavier Gilbert on this show, and he the question was put to him, directly and he did say that you can expect the best um, combination of what Jamaica's women's football has to offer and I think given the fact that it is not the case he himself would be extremely disappointed that he does not have the best possible squad at his disposal. I want to say Mariah that in these issues sometimes you don't even know what to believe which is why you want to hear from the persons involved directly. So, for example, one of the things I've been hearing um, today is that there was supposed to be a meeting yesterday between the JFF and members of the Reggae Girl setup. Um, two names were called from the Reggae Girl setup, and apparently the meeting was put off at last minute because they had games or something to that effect. Um, so you, you're hearing all these things but the matter is not being resolved. I've heard, for example, that um, because the meeting um, to resolve these issues um, was within the 14-day um, period that the Reggae Girls requested in October um, to get before Three. selection, um, and because the meeting was within that 14-day period, 
um, then, how do I put this? Lord, help me. Mm. Because the meeting was within the 14-day period, um, there is no way that they could then take part in this window. Because it would not have 14 days left. The, yes, the next they, match is on the 29th, yeah, right? Yeah, they would not have been advised within that 14-day period that they have requested. What we do know for sure now is that the Jamaica Football Federation have proposed a December 8 date yes. to meet with the girls, but they, ha they are still yet to get um, confirmation that that date um, will be accepted by the girls. Um, and, and this thing just keeps going, Mariah. That's the problem. It just keeps going. Um, this, this is like you're in court um, and you just keep getting a new date every time you go to court and you feel like your case is going forever, um, yet it's going nowhere. By the way, I've never had that situation. I've just heard about it. <laughs> well, um, you know, I just want to add to what you said just now about you know, all the things that are, that are on the line and the fact that we're keep put, we keep hearing that it's put off, you know, date after date. Ricardo, I think we're missing the most important, the bigger picture here. Mm. There is a match on November 29 that Jamaica has to, of course, win because we have to think about the point standings, currently third in the group, right? A lot is on the line and these ladies are expected to come out and fight while there is a fight going on off the pitch. We have to remember that. And for me, it's like Jamaica is not getting its best shot because, you know, again, I go back to coach not having the full complement of players that could actually put up a fight. And I'm not in any way trying to disregard the ladies that played because against Guatemala, that draw, a lot of heart, a lot of fight, Goals coming from players making their debut. So for me, I was totally impressed. But I'm thinking, you know, we play Panama again. Panama defeated Jamaica. And yes, you can study the team. You can go back out. But I just feel like experience is also very important. And a lot of the World Cup players have received that experience. They're not going to be playing. And that's a disadvantage from the onset. And let me tell you. Those things help the teams that are coming into the match. So Panama knows that a lot is going on in Jamaica right now. They're not focused because there's this mindset thing that, of course, plays a massive part in results. They're coming into this game probably laughing, saying, well, <laughs> Jamaica has so much things going on that, you know, they're bringing in um, younger players. Players are making their debut so we can walk all over them. And for me, that can work in the reggae girls favor because, you know, the teams can take them for granted. That's fine. But still, I think personally, we're not giving it the best shot that we could. Yeah, the one thing I will say is that, one, I don't think that Panama will take the Jamaicans lightly, even if they consider the reggae girl setup to be an understrength setup, which mm -hmm. it really is. Um, but also, I actually have complete confidence in the girls that they will remain focused, the ones who will be taking yes. the field next week, Wednesday. And that is because they have already shown that they can do that. Remember the first leg in Panama, the first match in Panama, um, there were issues within Panama in terms of the industrial strikes and protests on the street. Um, they had to be moved from their original hotel, um, changes of venue and all of that. They managed all of that and put in a tremendous performance, even though they came up short. Yes. And another brilliant performance in the home game against Guatemala. Those experiences, I think they will be better for. I think they will perform even better in this November window. But for me, it is still besides the point. Even if these girls win, the fact is you do not have your best team out there. And that is a problem. That is something that between the World Cup stars, as we have dubbed them, and the Jamaica Football Federation need to iron out and they need to do it quickly. As far as I'm concerned, this has gone on for far too long and an end needs to be put to it. And, and my main point is that I think somewhere along the line, the reggae girls or someone representing the reggae girls need to step forward and say that, listen, this is what is happening. Because consider 
that throughout this entire process, we have not heard from any representative of the reggae girls except through a couple of releases or letters. In my opinion, given everything that has happened, that is not good enough. And not you alone have heard, because based on what we've been told, there was supposed to be a meeting. The JFF didn't hear any sort of correspondence yesterday, your news. Somebody was supposed to meet with them again. No response. So for me, it's just not a tidy look. It doesn't look well, especially when I keep stressing there's so much on the line. I would love to be talking about these two players that scored last time. Um, I'm I the new player, Melissa Johnson. And yeah, I would love to be speaking about them and how they're incorporated mm -hmm. yeah, into the senior setup and you know what we can expect with these new players adding to what the World Cup star players have. And I feel like we are also being robbed of that treat, Ricardo. And you know, this discussion continues. I hope that the JFF and the representatives from the Reggae Girls can just meet quickly get over this, and let's get back to playing football. Yeah, well, the strong suggestion from the Jamaica Football Federation, as we have it, is that they've not been getting the type of responses from the girls that they would hope. And hopefully they will, and hopefully this matter will be resolved soon. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more of the Sportsmax Zone.